talk in pop music. Uh, so the article that we were given to analyze, uh, I'll briefly summarize it. So it talks about the popularity of rock and pop music in uh, China, mainland China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Uh, so what the article tries to say is that rock music is more popular among the male youth in China. to pop music which is considered more uh, feminine and is for uh, mainly for women and effeminate men. So if we analyze, if we dig deeper into uh, rock music, we see that rock music serves as a statement against the ruling hegemony, the ruling political class uh, in China. So this actually uh, gained significance after the Tiananmen Square protest in 1989, uh, where after which China had a lot more globalization and was a much more commercialized society as compared to what it was before 1989. So, uh, as we see that these rock artists usually see music as a tool uh, to impart their individuality because after uh, uh, the Tiananmen Square protest, they think that because of the excessive commercialization and capitalism, uh, it has led to a diffusion in their identity and through this channel they want to actually subvert the ruling authority with the government, with the government uh, in China. So uh, this is uh, basically the gist of the article that we were able to analyze. Uh, we will actually draw parallels with uh, the music industry in other parts of the world. And uh, uh, for that, I'll first go to uh, the British music industry in the late 70s and the 80s. So uh, to set the political context of uh, the United Kingdom in the late uh, 70s, uh, Margaret Thatcher came into power in 1979 and she actually uh, passed a lot of rules. Her decisions were very uh, righteous and which led to a large scale employment in the country. And uh, so it was completely pro capitalist, which led to a kind of alienation amongst the youth of uh, the United Kingdom. So uh, this is the album cover of an album called London Calling by Aunt Called Clash, which was released some a year after uh, Margaret has to came to the park, which shows uh, uh, the lead bassist of uh, uh, the band Clash back in smashing his uh, guitar uh, on the floor. So this actually shows the angst and frustration of the British youth uh, because of uh, the decisions taken by uh, the government. Yeah. So uh, there were some other bands in the early 80s. These are all examples of uh, the songs that were released in the early 80s. Uh, one is uh, by the Sex Pistols, uh, which is called Anarchy in the UK. So it actually calls for increased freedom for uh, the youth of the society. Uh, then we have a uh, song called Lost in the Supermarket by Clash. Uh, it's from the uh, same album, Dragon Calling, which talks about uh, the alienation of the individual because of the excessive consumerism in the society. And finally, uh, by a Manchester band called The Smiths, which is uh, Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now, which actually talks about the futility of it all. And probably the most famous example of fall is Alan Rock in the Glass, uh, another brick and wall, uh, a Pink Floyd album, uh, The Wall. So uh, we look at a small clip, uh, it's part of the video, and it actually exemplifies the argument that we are trying to make.
Yeah, so as you saw, uh, we see uh, kids going into the assembly line and coming out as, uh, so all of them look identical, they have the same mask. So this is what we're trying to because of the consumerist society, everybody is equal, there is no sense of identity amongst the youth in the, the country. And at the end, so what uh, the band is trying to say that uh, the youth should break out of this convention and um, uh, there should be a revolution against uh, the ruling company. So uh, closer home, if you look, there have there usually are not many. Uh, we do not see a lot of uh, such music, but uh, so there is one Sata from New York Star, which actually talks about uh, <coughs> the rights of uh, the youth in the country and talks about how uh, yeah. So there are not many songs. It is a more recent phenomenon uh, in uh, the Indian music industry. Uh, so, this is something which uh, has to be seen what uh, the future tra trajectory of the Indian, India, Indian music industry will be like. So, uh, now Rajan will talk about some of the managerial context of... Uh, so, now we will try to look at uh, some specific events that try to uh, introduce a new change in the social phenomena. And uh, first of all, we are going to be talking about the Rosita Revitor. And, uh, because during the time of World War II, when most of the male uh, population of the United States was engaged in wartime uh, activities such as uh, being a soldier or on the war front only, so the local production of machineries and other things was suffering. Hence, uh, uh, what the United States government tried to do is they came up with an ad, uh, with a campaign which depicted women as a, a revolter or as a very it's a very masculine looking poster for women uh, as opposed to the image that was being branded uh, up to that point of women being fe feminist and uh, then being uh, involved in jobs uh, such as only nurturing or which requires only soft skills. So what they were trying to do was using this poster they were trying to recruit women for the factory activities for the field works and uh, they were quite successful because when uh, women actually saw that saw this campaign and they identified with it and they thought that there is a need for us to be working in the factories and the current scenario demanded it. So they went and worked in the factories and later on it was found that they were even better at some of the jobs than uh, as compared to men and they were even working, even though they were working at only 60% of the salary that men were given uh, during that time. So this event, this individual event uh, introduced the change in the entire social phenomena of the United States because after the war was over, even uh, then women still uh, were going to work in, in the factories, although not in such large numbers as compared to during the World War, but uh, once it had opened the doors for them to work in this uh, uh, male-dominated industry, uh, the phenomenon never reversed. Next, uh, we are going to be talking about the Toyota GT86 brand advertisement. So let us have a look at that advertisement first. As can be seen 
from the ad, uh, the driver initially was feeling uh, stuck in a digital world where nothing was real and once he got to drive the Toyota car, uh, the message conveyed was that the Toyota is the real deal and once you get to know the real deal, you can never go back to the artificial world that is created around you. So, the advertisement was aimed at people who are uh, stuck in a rut of their daily life, of their uh, engineer, socially engineered life in such a way that everything that they do is pre uh, predefined for them and uh, they don't have any uh, innovation or any excitement in their life. So that was how this ad, ad was developed and promoted. And uh, another thing about this ad is the song that was being played in the background. It's a French singer, by French singer, and the lyrics are roughly translated into I have no regret. So even though the guy uh, was driving recklessly or even though the guy was defining social norms at that time, yet still he had no regrets because he was actually getting to experience life for the first time in his life and uh, he cannot go back from that. So that is how the advertisements are actually trying to work nowadays so that to capture the imagination of the consumer. <coughs> consumer in such a way that he get, uh, he, the consumer uses that product not for as a need but to experience something different from what he is feeling right now. So next I pass on to Hari for the greater part. Oh, thank you Rajit. So first Praso, uh, so first Pranjal explained how rock was a symbol against government oppression and Rajit gave two examples from, from managerial situations. The first one of course Rose the Riveter where the symbol was the, was against the oppression of the man of men and how to have the and how it was supposed to be liberation and the second one was Toyota GT eighty six where this this is a symbol against the oppression of the daily life and, the, and how this breaks the monotony. I will see how the how this politics of representation works at a company called ANF. It's a company called Africa Company and Frit, which was established in 1982. So it, it initially started as an elite uh, outfit of sporting goods and uh, sporting and expression goods, but then now it's an aspirational casual luxury brand. So you might think, okay, it's all good, you know, it's okay, it's just another retail company, but it's not just another retail, another clothing company. It's a very provocative company. It targets a very specific set of people, and sadly, it probably doesn't include any of us in the room or any of us in this country. Here's, here's the kind of people it targets. It targets extremely fit, white, uh, male and female, aged 18 to 22, 23. So what they're doing is right now is, I mean, these, these models here, these images represent what kind of people they target. So, and here's, as a, here's something said by the CEO himself. He actually said that we, don't, we, will, we refuse to make clothes for larger women. We don't target, we don't want fat people wearing our clothes. We only want the all-American kid, the really popular guy or the girl with a lot of friends. We want only him or her wearing our clothes. So here, so what was the result of that? So the result was falling sales, a lot of criticism about the company, negative publicity, etc, etc. So what kind of ANF? Uh, so here, the politics of representation is that you know they're using the symbol of young men and women uh, and conveying to the world that this is the kind of people we want. So what could they, what could, could they have done better to learn to you know to make sure that they didn't suffer from the effects of the effects of the campaign? So they could actually have learned something from the United Colors of Benetton and Hit campaign. That uh, that ad shows a whole bunch of world leaders kissing them, uh, kissing each other. So the one, so this is Obama and the Chinese Premier, that's the Israeli guy and the Palestinian guy, that's the Pope and the, I think the Grand Imam of the Egyptian Mosque. Uh, uh, so this, so in this, using this, uh, uh, using this representation, you know, UCB wants to convey to the world that it, it's a very inclusive, it's a very inclusive brand. Everyone, everyone, white, black, yellow, red, all kinds of people are welcome in there. Uh, they are welcome, in, uh, welcome to wear their clothes. So, so, ANF actually could have changed, you changed their representation from you know the model type uh, men and women to something like this to make sure that they didn't suffer from the negative uh, publicity. So of course they would have got uh, so ANF would have you know had an increase in sales, they would have positive publicity, etc. So what kind of a communication theory can be conceptualized out of this? As we can see in both the ANF and the and for United Colors of Benetton, both social and cultural elements were involved. So a social cultural communication technique can be uh, can be derived. So uh, there are like shared meanings and rituals and social structures. For example, in ANF, so the social structure is uh, that of you know the popular American kid. So he's at the top. ANF means that it's at the top. So they only sell to you know those kind of people. So so here, but then you know it creates a lot. But this uh, this technique creates a lot of problems because of increasing. 
diversity in the society, change and interdependence. I mean, if it's only in America of the 1920s or 1910s, where there's only pretty much only white people and a few black people in the South, then their message might have worked. But a country like America or even a country like India with so much diversity in terms of region, religion, etc., uh, that problem, that those kind of techniques won't work. So hence the focus should be on the meaning itself and not the message. And as you know, as we can see from both these examples, from ANS and from UCB, this communication can be both a boon and a pain.